What's up, guys? So this past Tuesday, the 19th, I went to another video game composers event called Music for Games, I believe. It was organized by Digital LA, and it was held at the Microsoft Store in Century City. It, it was just so cool. I like when, when events like that take place in small areas because it's more personable. It's not like this huge thing where you're just like, Pff, yeah. Right, there's no way I'm gonna be able to talk to them. If I had sat in the front, I was like a row behind the, the people in the front, and I wanted to sit in the front. But since I was recording, I didn't wanna like, the camera would have been like right up in their grill. So I was just like, I don't wanna be like obnoxious, like with the camera like right there. I didn't wanna make them feel weird or anything, which I don't think they would have. But still, I think it was just more of a thing on my end that I just felt weird about it. It was really cool because it wasn't like, it wasn't like a panel, like your typical panel. It was more of like a meet and greet. It was like a networking event. Totally like networking. Um, there was like snacks and stuff. And uh, when the composers came in, you could talk to them like they were just you know whoever like you could just go over there like hey what's up you know there weren't that many people but the seats that were there were filled so it was a good it they, you did have to buy a ticket so I guess they had like a, a specific number of seats available for whoever was going to come or something the composers that were there were Chris Velasco he was one of the composers of Mass Effect 3 he also worked on Borderlands 1 and 2 Darksiders, and then of course Elon Zur, who this was the second time that I met, um, and I just I I always get so excited every time I see him because Elon Zur is just so special to me because for those of you that know, um, you know that he his music made me cry like a baby in Dragon Age Origins, and I've never had such a real emotional response to a video game like I did in Dragon Age Origins and it was all because of the music. Um, not even in Mass Effect 3. I cried in Mass Effect 3 but nowhere near the emotional reaction I had like I did in, in Dragon Age Origins. That's still my top most emotional reaction to a video game. Dragon Age Origins. And, that, and that's, you know, and Zor's music. Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, um, what else? Baldur's Gate 2, I believe, um, EverQuest, all those epic emotional RPGs. He most likely did work on it. He's so talented and so down to earth that it was just like, so it was just freaking awesome to get to talk to him again. Um, and this time a little more one-on-one, uh, -on -one, which was so cool. And then, of course, Penka Kuneva, uh, who I also met before in the previous um, uh, video game composers uh, event that I went to. That one was bigger, the, the first one. There was like eight composers there, I think. She's so sweet. She's so nice. Um, she was the one that told me about the event. I don't know if you guys remember the video that I had made about the, the album that she had released called uh, Warrior's Odyssey. She had contacted me because she remembered me and all that, which I was absolutely honored. She contacted me and she was like, would you help me out in promoting this? Would you make a video? Would you, you know, like, she was just like, it doesn't matter, you don't have to, but she was like, I, I appreciate it. I was like, for sure. So I did the video and um, I really appreciate, I know some of you did get the uh, album and I really appreciate that. I got it myself, it's a really good album. Um, it's just like like a like a little project that she worked on. It's not part of a video game or anything, but she had a video game in mind, um, which is really cool. I was like, how do you come up with something like that with something that's like not even existent? Like she just had to like come up with these ideas and like scenarios and like imagine it, I guess, uh, of what it would what the soundtrack would be part of. It was, it's just freaking cool. But I was this close of not going. I was so depressed. I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to go. Cause I had, I'm, I told you guys I had a really bad cough and it was like in my chest and I have asthma. So it was like affecting that. And it was really bad outside. Like it was raining and it was cold that day. And I was like, and there was wind and I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to go. Cause that kind of weather um, is bad for me. Like my asthma, I would, 
I, I get sick. I took the risk. I was like, screw it. I'm going. I, I was like warm or almost like a freaking parka and all this. <laughs> My big jacket. And it actually didn't rain that much anymore. Um, so it got better. So that was good. I was like, oh, thank goodness. And last but not least, Kevin Ripple. I hope I'm not butchering his last name. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm pretty sure. Some of the things that he's worked on are Gears of War 1. <laughs> he worked on Hunted, uh, Aliens, Colonial Marines, Ascending New Gods, the new game. Oh, and he also did, I don't know if you guys ever saw that short. It was like, it, it, it was this animated short and it looked so good. Oh my God, people wanted it to be a game so bad. I don't know if they dropped this whole idea or what, but um, they said that it was going to be a movie, maybe, like an animated movie, but I don't I don't know how what's going on with it now. Um, but it was called Ruin. I'll put the link in the description. He did the music for that, and it's really cool. The people that attended, there was a lot of composers, actually, like upcoming composers. Um, so they're like, oh, so how many composers are in the crowd? And like a lot of people raised their hand. I was like, I'm just a crazy gamer. <laughs> yeah, I asked if I could record the event. I asked the guy that was hold like the, 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 the guy that was hosting it. And he was like, well, if it's if it's OK with the composers, then yeah. So I go to the composers. They were like all in one little table talking before the event started. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, I told my friend, I was like, dude, I don't want to just walk over there and like, hey guys. And he's like, just go. He's like, everybody's going up and talking to them. So I just walked up there and I was like, ding, ding, ding. I asked Penka Kuneva because she's the one that I, I'm a little bit uh, more comfortable with because I, 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 sp I speak to her on Facebook every now and then. And I spoke to her the first time and all that. And she's very, very, very nice. So I was like, um, is it okay? And right when she turns around, uh, Kevin Ripple and uh, Chris Velasco turn around and I'm like I've got these three composers these amazing composers looking at me and I'm just like and I'm like I'm short already I'm 5'3 I felt way shorter like I felt like a little smurf or something like and I was like um would you guys mind if I recorded and they're like oh yeah for sure it's fine it's cool they were like so nice everyone was so nice Kevin Ripple was really funny he was really cool and Chris Velasco also, he's really, really nice. And Anzur was turned around, like, uh, he was still turned around. He didn't see that I was talking to him. So I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to ask him about myself. So I go, ding, 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 hi! He remembered me, which is so awesome. I was like, I had my hair shorter that time, and I had a hat on and all this. He's like, no, yeah, I remember you. I was like, is it cool if I record? And he was like, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And he was like, did I ever give you my contact information? And I was like, no. And he's looking in his wallet looking for his contact information and I was like <laughs> I get his email and his contact information. So he's like, yeah, just contact me. I was like, dude. Dude. So yeah, maybe sometime in the future I will be contacting him to see if I could get some kind of like interview or something which would be awesome because I know a lot of you guys love his stuff. And I know there's a lot of Dragon Age fans out there. I know there's a lot of Fallout 3 fans out there. Um, so I know that you guys would probably really love to see something like that. And it would be a treat and an honor for me to be able to do that. So if I can, I definitely will do that. Um, and he's so nice about it. So maybe. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Then the panel starts and everything. And uh, I have the video on my, on, my, on my channel. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's very interesting. It's kind of long. It's like, I think it's almost like an hour long, uh, but it, it's it's super cool. The audio was not great because my camera doesn't have a great mic on it. It's not a very good mic. And the worst thing is that I hardly ever use the zoom on my camera. So this was like pretty much the first time that I would, was using the zoom deliberately. And I didn't know that every time I zoomed, the audio would like get muffled. And that pissed me off. I was like, you got to be kidding me. If I'd known that, I would have never zoomed. But I didn't know that. So I apologize for that. But then there was a lot of... The store was open. The Microsoft store was open. So there was people behind us. There was uh, customers all over the place. They had the music on. I don't know why they didn't turn off the music. But they had the music going. And yeah, people were back there and like talking and everything. And they didn't have mics over here for the panelists. So it was like... 
at the end of the panel, we, they had like a little, a, a really short Q and A because they were they were already going to close the store. So uh, some people, I, I recorded the the questions that everybody else recorded, and right when they were finishing answering a question, um, I was like, "Damn, my battery died." I so I'm taking out my battery and I'm switching the other battery, and right then the guy was like, "So there's no more questions," and I'm like. Oh, and I had a question, and I'm like, oh well, I'm not going to record it, oh well. And my question was, do you guys play any of the games that you compose for? Their answer was pretty much, in general, all of them were pretty much saying, yeah, we do kind of play those games, but not, some of them don't play them fully, but they do like to experience it playing it, because they could, they, they get a different idea of what their, their, their music is doing, and also what the audio director and, and all of them did with their music. Because they, they turn in bits and pieces and the music like really cut up so that the audio director and all them could do whatever, they could use it however they want to. Um, they, they, expl they explain this in the panel. Chris Velasco told me that he did play Mass Effect 3. He had just finished playing it um, and he, he loved it. So uh, yeah, they do, they do sometimes play their games. Like Inonzur said that he does play uh, some of the games and sometimes they'll just play like snippets of it or like parts of it uh, like the parts where they want to hear how the music works as a as you as a player because it's it's different um, what the music does to you while you're playing after the panel it was just like all right let's mingle you know just mingle and for a few minutes I took all this stuff all this stuff to for them to sign I was like oh yes I forgot like a moron I forgot to take my gears of war <sighs> I don't even want to think about it anymore. Anyways, I got Penka Kaneva to sign this. Um, Chris Velasco signed my collector's edition of Mass Effect 3. Uh, I, I think you could see it. The bad thing is that this is the tin case. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that it doesn't smear off. Right now it's fine, but with time, I just hope it doesn't smear off. Um, there's my Borderlands 2 soundtrack signed by Chris Velasco. And, of course, Darksiders. I love this soundtrack. The game. And, you know, Zor worked on Dragon's Dogma, so... I love his little squiggly sign. Uh, so, yeah. He didn't do the whole, the full thing. He worked, like, collaboration with other composers on there. Um, it was pretty funny, though, because I was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure he worked on this. And I was like... I don't want to just go up to him and like, can you sign this? And then he's like, oh, I didn't work on that. That would have been embarrassing. So I asked, I was like, didn't you work on Dragon's Dogma? And he was like, yeah, I did. And, and I was like, oh, okay, good. I was like, could you sign it? And he was like, yeah, I'm sure. And he's going to sign it. And he's like, I didn't really like the music. <laughs> Dragon's Dogma is very different to his style. It's it, it looks like it's something that was made for him to compose for. But... Capcom uh, did go a different route with it. Like they have electric guitars in here and stuff like that. So they kind of made it more modernized um, with the music and not so orchestral uh, and and like very fast uh, beats per second. So it's 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 a little bit different from what he's used to. So I think that's probably why. I mean, I don't think he did tell me that that, that was why he felt weird with it. Um, but he's like, I don't turn down any job. I don't turn down any gig. So he was like, I always say yes. I was like, okay, I don't know if you can answer this, but Dragon Age 3 was announced. I was like, are you going to be working on Dragon Age 3? Because he's worked on Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2. And he was like, no. I was like, what? I was almost 100% sure that they were going to go back to Inon Zor for that. Inon Zur gave Dragon Age its soul. The music that he gave Dragon Age was, it was part of the game. That it, so much that to take him away from it is like, it's very, very surprising to me. Where I'm just like, oh my god. And I was like, why? And he's like, well, it's not my decision. He was like, um, now, okay. I would love to tell you guys everything that he told me, but I'm not just because um, because of rumors and because this is the internet and people just start rumors all over the place. And I don't want to tie anything that he said to any rumors because it could get him in trouble. Uh, 
which I know that he didn't give me anything that he wasn't supposed to say. I know that. But I, I know that people change things around, so I'm not even going to go there. Just know that he said that Dragon Age 3, with the in, when it comes to the music, it's going in a different direction. And they're going for a, 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 a bigger composer. He didn't tell me the name of the composer. I don't even think he knows. Or if he does, he didn't tell me. But he did say something about it that I don't want, I don't really want to say. But he did say that it sounds amazing. He was like, it's, it looks like it's going to be a great game. And he was like, I'm definitely going to play it. I was like, well, yeah, for sure. I'm definitely going to play it too. He was like, I would love to be part of it. He was like, but I can't do something that I'm not. Like, you know, give them something that I, that I'm not, you know, like he's like, I'm not going to imitate anybody. I'm going to do my thing, and if they want to go, you know, do something different, then they've got to go elsewhere. I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't say anything that he wasn't supposed to say, uh, because he's not even part of it. So it's not like he's got a contract with Dragon Age 3 for, da for Dragon Age 3 or anything. But I just don't want rumors to start, uh, because a lot of people misinterpret things that are said on the internet. So I don't want to be the, the culprit of that. I also talked to Chris Velasco one-on-one. -on -one. When he was signing my stuff, because he was the one that signed more of my stuff, because I had more of that stuff. He asked me if I played the, the DLC of uh, Mass Effect 3, and I was like, yeah, I've played them all. And he was like, I worked on Leviathan, um, Omega, and others, other, other DLCs. And he was like, oh, and I can't talk about the other one. And I was like, oh, the one that's going to come out. And he was like, yeah, I can't say anything about it. I was like, do you know the name of it? This was before it was released, of course, because this was just recently released, what, today? So I was like, do you know the name of it? He was like, yeah, I know the name of it, but I can't tell you. I was like, ah. But yeah, he worked on that too. Uh, the new one, the Citadel one. Of course, I talked to Topanka Kaneva, and she's always so sweet. Uh, she was, she was, I saw that she got really happy when she saw that I had this album. She's doing a lot of um, apps, like, you know, iOS type of uh, um, app game music. The whole app and iOS games and all that are booming right now. So that's a that's a pretty good... You know, Zora once said in the first composer, video game composer thing, that if they ever asked him to do music for apps, he'd totally say yes. Like he said, he doesn't turn down any gig. That's smart. If you guys ever hear that there is some kind of event like this around uh, your city or where you live, definitely go to it. It's so awesome. I mean, music, even it's like, oh, I'm not into music. The, if you are into video games, you definitely, I know that you do appreciate the music because the music in video games gives us the, 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 the feeling. It, it's such a huge part of the experience that if you were to take it away, you probably would miss out on so many um, moments to to get an emotion out of the player. So yeah, it's just so cool to meet these guys uh, because they put so much time and so much effort and so much dedication in what they do. And you could see it. You could totally see it. And um, that's just something uh, that I respect greatly. I met a lot of really cool people there too. There was... Uh, one, there was a guy that gave me his YouTube channel. I think he's starting up his YouTube channel. I'll put it in the description if you guys want to check it out. And another person that was, he's like a, a, a game developer, like an upcoming game developer. And I was like, dude, that's awesome. He's studying uh, to do that. And he, they're already working on a few app, like games for the, I, for like your iPad or iPhone. Um... And he was like, yeah, it's almost going to come out sometime in the middle of this year. And I was like, dude, just email me when it comes out and, uh, you know, I'll play it. Or, and we'll... he said that I, I, he, he was like, well, you might even, I, I might even get you to test it. I was like, hell yeah. When that comes out, I'll, I'll let you guys know um, in case you guys are interested. So just to check the description for these uh, links that I'm going to provide. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. I didn't create it myself. I found it somewhere, I modified it, and it was just this wavering type of woo 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 sound in the <sighs> war, and that became the sound that everybody recognized.